Mediocre Monkey Dummy channel. Here we are. This is a Tau Tau DBX1 140cc pit bike. And my goal is to convert this perfectly fine pit bike into a scrambler. Um, I've had this bike for two years and I also have a Honda Monkey and I have a Buccaneer 250. Uh, so this bike's not gonna get used that much. And so what I wanna do is use it to try and learn how to do a build. And uh, this is gonna actually be a harder build than in many ways in starting with, um, let's say an old Honda or something because it's a condensed frame. Uh, there's a lot of modifications I'm gonna have to make. Now, let me be clear. I don't know what I'm doing. I've never welded anything in my life. I've never actually even seen welding in real life. Um, yet this is what I'm gonna do. And the reason I'm gonna do this is to prove to all of you out there that we're thinking about doing something like this, that you can do it. Um, I have no special knowledge, no special skill, no special abilities, and I don't expect this bike to come out perfect. Uh, my goals are modest. I want it to look decent. It doesn't have to look perfect, but I want it to look kind of cool and I want it to not break apart on me when I'm driving it. That's about it. If it's um, semi-functional and looks decent, hey, we reached our goals. It's gonna be a long process and there's gonna be a lot of changes I have to make. I don't know yet whether I'm gonna do it as one video or a series, we'll see. Wish me luck, mediocre monkey dummy. Subscribe and like, and uh, let's get to know each other. Take care. All right, step one, we're gonna remove all the plastics. Then we'll eyeball the frame. We gotta take off the gas tank too. So we'll take off the plastics, the gas tank, we'll eyeball the frame and see what we have here. I can tell you that I'm gonna have problems with the proportions of this bike uh, as far as it being, you know, super legit. I'm not expecting that. The problem is, is the, you have a lot of clearance, which is good for dirt scrambling. But as a result of that, even though this seat is high, which is 35 inches, the foot pegs are not very far from the seat and I'm tall I'm on all my length is between my, my knee and my ankle. I have unusually long legs. So the bike was already pushing the limits as far as comfortability. And now uh, it's gonna be even difficult, more difficult because that frame is kind of scrunched because it's a pit bike. So we'll see what I can do to fix that. My plan is to get bigger wheels, which will extend it out uh, I'm gonna move two inches up in the wheel, which give me a, a one inch further in wheelbase in on the left side and one and a half on the right is gonna go with 19. So it's a three inch, uh, what is that? One and a half plus two and a half inch expansion of the wheelbase, which will help to make room for what is comparatively a larger gas tank. Um, so we'll see, let's get the, uh, let's get it off. So that's what it looks like with the plastics off. Now we're gonna take the tank off. Take the tank off. We just take off this uh, seat placement screw. I think that's the only thing holding it on. We gotta drain the gas. We're gonna do that outside because um, we don't want fumes where I might be welding. And any guy says spill something, we want it outside. Okay, so right there is a uh, line coming right out of the tank through the filter and then the tube runs around to the uh, petcock and then over to the carburetor. So we're gonna disconnect right here. A little fuel will probably come out of there and then uh, funnel it into my little gas can here, try and minimize the spill.
Okay, so here we have the bike completely stripped down and got issues. The problem is the gas tank, when it sits on this, it's too big. It bangs against this, so it's not actually sitting on it. But rather than cutting this and disturbing the integrity of the frame, since I'm going to be, you know, brand new welder here, I'm going to raise, I'm going to put a bridge, a tube right here, raise it up and then create a second arm. So it's not resting on this. And then that raises the gas tank. And then we hopefully um, get a straight line cutting across and uh, then I can either create a bridge up here for the seat loop, which I think would look kind of odd because then all this is gonna show, but I can cover that actually uh, with like a cage. Or what I may do is remove all this and just make a fresh seat loop, which is probably what I'm gonna do. All right, since I don't want to cut the frame on the main tube here, I did a mock-up of raising the support for the gas tank with an attachment. Um, and this is the gas tank right here. It fits really well. And... Uh, so that I know the basic heights that I need to weld, and then I can figure out how to do it properly. But that's basically where the support would be for the gas tank. Okay, so what I'm doing is putting on a 16 inch rear wheel and a 19 inch front wheel. And that uh, gives bike better proportions. Later I'm gonna change the rear shock, lowering it a little bit. Also, the front fork's lowering it a little bit. There sure is. <laughs> oh, wow, it is happening really quickly. Wow. Oh, my gosh, look at the letters over there. That's so cool. Whoa. What is that spray? It's a uh, white vinegar. And uh, there we go. So here I'm changing out the front forks for uh, 27 and a half inch forks, which will change the proportions of the bike, make it a little more balanced. So you can see I already installed a 300 and I want to say 30 millimeter shock in the rear instead of a 360, I believe, which was there before. Okay, so we have this angle piece that we're going to uh, 
go ahead and fuse together. It's, it was 35 degrees and uh, looks like we have good uh, flush connection. And the way I did that is I used this uh, chop saw basically for tubing and you can angle it. Um, so when you have the two connecting pieces like that, uh, you can do it flush and you don't have to uh, grind it down to make it fit, which is really nice. You get a good fit right there. And then when this piece goes back down on the uh, main frame, I do have to do a little grinding to kind of make a, a good flush fit. And uh, if it's not flush, you have too much of a gap, that's not good. All right. Okay, so here it is, it's in position. I uh, buffed out the paint off the uh, frame to get a uh, you know, raw steel where we could connect. And uh, it's not exactly perfect, but uh, we're just gonna go ahead and do it. Being that this is the mediocre monkey man, I think it's pretty good. Uh, see the weld there, you know, not the best weld in the world. Some might call that hammered dog shit. I don't know, through a welding snob, but it's strong, it'll hold, and uh, that's just the way it goes. I'm a new welder, so. Okay, we're all welded on. Not the prettiest welds in the world, but uh, you know, what can I say? It's on, it's tight. It's only holding a gas tank. It's not really load bearing, so I think it should be fine. I'm gonna have to do a better job when I do the seat, but uh, should hold the tank real well. And uh, there you go. That's my solution to raising the tank. We'll see how I do on the seat. Okay, this is what we call DIY pipe bending, okay? Now you can buy a proper tool and do it the right way, um, or you can be a lazy, good for nothing like me, and do it this way. So you can see, look how even that bend is. Crazy, right? That's how we're making a seat loop. Yeah, buddy. Okay, so what we have here is a mock-up of the seat loop. However, this is a one inch loop. I'm actually gonna be using three quarters. I'm only using that for positioning and to counterbalance the weight while I do some cutting. So what I'm doing here is this bike already has uh, a support for the seat, which was much more narrow. So I, can, I can't just connect the seat loop like other people do to the seat bracket, but I don't want to get rid of it because it's guaranteed working correctly with the shock. So what I'm going to do is cut this loop and weld it to the bracket that's already there. That way it's got good support. I don't, I'm taking less risk that my weld for this, let's say, would, would not work or screw up or 
what have you. Um, and it's just a smarter way of doing it regardless. So um, that's what we're gonna do. We're gonna cut uh, at the mark here and over here and then get the uh, three quarter loop and we'll weld it to here and here. And then we're gonna weld this to here, to here, to here, and to here. And then we will have our seat loop and I'll, I'll uh, connect a bracket going across just for more support. And then I may or may not add another support bracket going from here to there. I haven't decided yet, we'll see how it's working. But um, project's coming out real well, waiting on new handlebars. I've got new grips. I already installed the new risers. So we got black handlebars coming. And uh, there we go. We'll just swap out the gear shift. I've got the fork boots on there. And I had to remove the headlight to do the wiring. And I'll be reinstalling all that soon. So we're getting close here, guys. edges a little bit and then we'll get the welding Put a little uh, brace piece of metal there. I'm going to go ahead and weld that on right now. Okay, we're done with the seat loop. Now what we're gonna do is drill a couple holes in this bracket and put the screws from the seat directly through and then we gotta make a bracket for the uh, rear screws. And then we are done. And uh, just odds and ends. Okay, so I'm done with all the welding and now I gotta drill the holes into the brackets and I'm having trouble getting the exact spot and I don't want to mess it up. So I put toothpaste on there and then I'm going to press it on there and hopefully that'll uh, tell me where to drill. Okay, there are the marks. I guess I'll just drill right through the toothpaste. All right, we got our holes. They should be perfect. Clean that up and we'll see. I'm going to have to attach the back tomorrow because I don't have the uh, 
screws and nuts because I didn't realize I was going to go that route. But the front is on. I don't know if you can see that, but it is perfect. Literally perfect. I can't believe it. The line is clean. It butts right up to the end the uh, gas tank just like I wanted it. I am very, very pleased with this uh, seat loop. It's secure, it's strong, we are good. Okay, to do the electrical for the horn and the headlight, I decided to go with a remote control lithium 12 volt battery because it's lightweight. Uh, I put it in a waterproof package and it's Velcroed uh, to the shock right there. I'm gonna put a little strap just to keep it more secure. The benefit of this is it's easy to charge. I can just plug it right in, it's charged. And uh, the headlight and the horn, frankly, I don't plan on using too much because this is a, basically a dirt bike in California. Once it's plated as a dirt bike, no matter what you add to it, they will not consider it street legal. So there's no point in uh, doing a 12 volt heavy battery on the back and obstructing the sort of uh, open space of it, making it heavier. So that's why I'm going with a lightweight remote control battery that I can charge when I need to, uh, if I'm gonna be using the headlight or the horn uh, when I go on like the country roads around the ranch. All right, final step is we're going to uh, paint the uh, raw parts that, had a, that I had to shave off. And uh, I don't have a color that really matches. So I got two colors, one is black, one is charcoal gray. I'll test it, see which one is closest. It doesn't really matter because none of this is really gonna show. Uh, maybe a little bit, but not much. So not real worried about it. I'm gonna do it quick and dirty. I don't even have newspaper to uh, protect things. So I'm just gonna use a piece of cardboard as I go. Okay, just waiting for the paint to dry and we'll put on the gas tank in the seat. And uh, it's amazing, a little coat of paint and the, actually makes the uh, welds look halfway decent. Hopefully they'll hold. And uh, that's it. The color doesn't match, you know, the body's gray, the top is black, but it doesn't matter because like I said, 90% of that's gonna be covered up. So I think it's fine. Just showing you the gas tank on, how it's connected. There's a little tab underneath here, so it's very secure, not moving at all. And now we'll pop on the seat. Okay, here is the finished product. Nice straight line with the gas tank and the seat loop. Came out pretty darn good. If I do say so myself, this is the first build I've ever done. And it was quite challenging because a pit bike has all the wrong dimensions. Now I would say this is a legitimate mid-size bike, not too different than a, let's say a 125 a standard scrambler. This happens to be a 140. It's a much more comfortable than it used to be because we've got the forks now are a little bit shorter in the front. We have a bit of a lowered seat with the mono shock, which is a little bit smaller, but then we have the bigger tires. God damn it. All right, let's take it for a test ride. All right, we are done with our test ride. Everything works great. Unbelievable. Thinking of maybe adding a little front fender, haven't decided yet, might do that. So bottom line for this build, what I had to do is create another arm for the gas tank to raise that up place the rear shock to lower it a little bit and also just have better suspension. Swap out the front forks for a little bit shorter forks, put on bigger wheels, swap out the handlebar, the risers, the controls, add the headlight, the horn, and a little electric system separate from the um, 
geez, now I'm forgetting what the word is, uh, the magneto. So yeah, everything works. Everything looks, I think, really good. And uh, very happy with the result, way beyond what I expected. It rides great, it actually rides better than it did. It's much more comfortable. And the ergonomics are better and it looks fantastic. So there you go. If I can do it, you can do it. Mediocre Man Channel.